I'm Josh Paulison, and welcome to Inspector Josh Investigates TV, where we reverse engineer TV shows to draw story writing lessons from them. Today, we're looking at Our Gang, the video titled Playing Hooky. Warning, spoilers for this video are incoming. Today we are looking at the method of more. The method of more is a way to continue having conflict in your story. You look at a conflict that you have, and rather than just wrapping it up, every time that you wrap one up, you add on another. Additionally, you may have multiple conflicts going on at the same time and choose to only wrap up one or a few of them and keep a few others ongoing. Here's why this can be helpful. When you have this sort of setup, you can have a high-octane story continue to be high-octane rather than slow down. Additionally, this can help us keep track of all of the conflicts we have going on so we don't leave anything behind and unsolved. And thirdly, this can help us resolve everything at the end should we choose to, and in order to do that, we need to be aware of what we have actively going on. Here's how this is demonstrated in Our Gang, which by the way is the precursor to Little Rascals, and has pretty much the same feel and structure. So first, we see a dog. And then we get some info. So, Pansy was destructive. Anything he couldn't chew, he ripped. We already see that something is incoming, but the conflict doesn't happen until we see this little pupper, and then we get Pansy v. Pup. Not Pansy versus Pup. That is so pre B Batman v. Superman. And then we cut away, and suddenly we have this thing with some kittens here. And this girl, she has all these kittens. This little boy, he only has one kitten. Poor boy, I feel the same way, except I have no kittens. And she ends up stealing his kitten. So suddenly, we get an additional conflict. And you can see that... He is not happy, this little boy. He is quite flabbergasted at the precociousness of perhaps his sister took my kitten. So we have this additional conflict now. Now we have two conflicts ongoing. How do we resolve them? Well, what happens in this video is that it, basically it's forgotten. This is something that unfortunately happens a lot in Little Rascals and Old Gang is that rather than really resolve things, things are just forgotten. Kind of a stylistic choice, not my personal favorite. And also Pansy v. Pup is resolved because now we have stepped away from that conflict. It's just gone. But let's add another one quickly. Oh, look, a chicken. So now we have this opportunity for... Wait for it. There we go, chicken attack. So we just get another one, but it's pretty quickly resolved. Now we need another conflict, so what can we do? Well, we can add in a little bit of frustration on the part of the chickens and just have them start talking, because that's what chickens do. I have worked with chickens for many years, and so we get chicken angst. Now, this chicken angst ends up going on for a little while, and now, oh, oh no, we have, what is this? Chicken angst. So, now we have this other conflict. Oh no, what's going to happen? Oh, okay, well that just got resolved. Now it doesn't mean resolved that things went well, but it means that things closed. So now we are sitting here and we have chicken angst. How is that resolved? Well, we end up moving on. So I guess that we can say that chicken angst is also checked off of our list. And moving forward, we have digging, destruction, and I cringe whenever I see this because I feel sad at seeing things destroyed. But um, we don't really have any conflict going on right now. We just have destruction. But we know that this is not going to go well. So very shortly, we need to add another conflict. So what do we do? We have the mother come out. And she witnesses the dog struction and is quite frustrated. Now, um, I am going to need to give you a warning right here. The dog lives. The dog lives. So don't worry. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of modern audiences would not go for this if this were made today. So, we have the dog struction, and oh, let's just add a little bit more in there, make that a big dog struction, and we get this conflict ongoing. Father comes out, yeah, this is really going this direction. The dog lives, and now though we have saved Doggo. The kid against the father, father against son, how dramatic. And this ends up continuing. There's sorrow. He has to end up getting the dog into a place where he can hurt it. But fortunately, a little boy, my boy, he ends up um, saving the dog by making the bullets nothing. He just plays with the gun. Definitely no problem there. Definitely wouldn't be a problem for modern audiences again. And um, we end up continuing. And so how do we resolve these two conflicts? Now, again, one of the things that's big is that whenever there is one conflict, there's another little one just added in. Or whenever all the conflicts are resolved... 
another one is just immediately piled on with Old Gang, and again, the same continues true when you move into Little Rascals. Now, um, he ends up wiggling for a while, and again, the doggo didn't die, the dog was playing dead. So just to be clear here, doggo is okay, and so very shortly, we are able to actually resolve both of these two conflicts, Dogstruction and Save Doggo. Now again, resolve does not necessarily mean that the problems themselves are resolved, but that it's done. So that is how the conflicts are handled inside of this episode. There are some things that are interesting. One of them is that they make sure that there's always some sort of conflict going on. That's where Little Rascals and Old Gang, as this was called at the time, derive most of their humor. Now beyond that, though, we have something else happening. We have this thing where at times we will have two conflicts and we will end up kind of juggling between them. This is the part that I find a lot more fascinating and a lot more interesting for our own story creation because we can use the method of more like so. Introduce one conflict. Introduce another conflict. And then we end up resolving the first conflict. But rather than resolving the second conflict, we add a third conflict. Now we can resolve the second conflict, but we don't resolve the third conflict. Now we introduce a fourth conflict. And now rather than resolving the third and fourth conflict, we just resolve the third conflict. And what we have here is that we always are introducing a new conflict so that there is always something going on. And I find this approach to what is done in Old Gang here interesting and fascinating. Here's how you could use this in your own story. Let's say that you want to have something continue to go really badly for your story. So you have Bob and Susie, who are my go-to characters, and I love them, and they are perfectly developed and without a doubt the most believable characters I have ever made. So, Bob ends up having this problem where Susie is mad at him because he forgot to let her know that he'd invited friends over. Okay, so we have the beginning of a conflict. We have a new conflict. We have people are coming over. Okay, well, let's not just resolve that. Let's add in a new conflict. New conflict is that Susie's mother-in-law is coming to visit. Okay, Bob's mom is coming to visit, and this is very distressing. So now we have two conflicts. Now, what we can do is that we can have it so that the uh, friends who are kind of come over, Bob ends up contacting them, being like, hey, this isn't going to work anymore. Now we've resolved the first conflict, but the mother-in-law conflict is still in play. Now we add another conflict that, rather than resolving that one. And in this case, we end up getting a very pushy salesperson who ends up coming in and won't leave. Now we have another conflict. Now we can resolve the mother-in-law. The mother-in-law comes and she sees... <gasps> That vacuum salesman was my ex, and then she ends up leaving, and so that's resolved. But we still have this other conflict where the vacuum salesperson won't leave. So then what we have is that perhaps we have a um, wild turkey ends up getting into the house, and the salesperson is allergic to turkeys. Now we can have these conflicts resolve each other, and so we could have it so that now there's a turkey in the house, but the uh, salesperson leaves because they're allergic to turkeys. And so we end up getting this cycle where there's always something going wrong, and the wrong thing may resolve another wrong thing, but we are still keeping the cycle of wrongness of conflict. Conflict. Now, again, the way that Old Gang often does it is that it will end up having conflicts and then it will resolve them and then it will add new conflicts. But I'm a very big fan of the approach of creating conflicts and then you add another one and then you only resolve one of them so that there's always an ongoing conflict that we're aware of so that we have the ongoing tension. Your mileage may vary and I don't believe that conflict is central to all stories. That's something that can be a very common American belief in creative entertainment. But um, regardless, this is an interesting method if you want to create high octane stories and make something that has a feeling of intensity throughout the whole thing. And with that, I'd say it's safe to say, case closed. Thanks so much for watching. You can find me on Twitter at Josh Paulison. You can find me online at joshpaulison.com. And you can sometimes find me wandering around the streets and looking for new mysteries and clues. And I hope that you have a fantastic week, fantastic day, and that your life itself is indeed fantastic. <laughs>